try and get the ball, but Hill is playing well. He turns around now and swings the play back short of the center, and Barron appears to come in and take the mark in front of Allen. Barron sends it down now towards the half-forward line. Up they fly for it, now unable to take the mark. Frosty Miller bearing down on the ball. He's got the chance. He tried to get a little kick in up here towards the forward zone. Palmer oh, pull around the neck to McDonald. But McDonald's gone for the big hand pass, and this is Stead. Townsend coming in, and Townsend's put it through. It's Dandenong now, coming right back into it against Port Melbourne. Up goes Zamora there, gets it to Siren. And it means 12-12. That's the score to Port Melbourne. Dandenong 16-13, of course, the crowd stream onto the ground here. Well, it is uh, for the moment. Dandenong have won the 1967 BFA Grand Final. And look at the second. indicating this well what a game oh tremendous Bill and I'd say that if Paddy Flaherty kicks this one this will definitely seal it with the 28 minute mark on the board for the uh, crowd the Christian crowd no doubt not too happy with the, with the awarding of this free kick well it can either make it one goal the difference or 11 points Dandenongan 14 13 97 Preston 13 14 92 29 minutes into the last quarter. It's on its way and it's a point. One point. Well, one goal the difference. And if Preston can score a goal, it'll be dead even. Could be a draw. Right. And I noticed Huey Mitchell there when that uh, free kick was paid. He jumped up out uh, of his box there, Rodney boundary line. Uh, probably a little disappointed with that result. Would have no doubt liked to see the big one. Here's the kick out now from Leslie. It's on the half-back line and she and out onto the ground and let's repeat the final scores standing on 14 14 a total of 98 getting home in a magnificent grand final Preston were defeated by a goal 13 14 92 oh well, we hope you've enjoyed the ball now on the half forward line for uh, Dandenong who's battling away Gilmore tried to get rid of it couldn't and the umpire says it was held to him and it will be a ball up now he's given the free kick Frosty Miller was pushed out on the ground. Who did that? Blind, the not Stokes, number 12. Stokes of Geelong West. He's talking with the umpire now. So now, he's kicked two, uh, Frosty Miller. He's a long way out from goal, at least 60 metres, coming in. Oh, bad kick from Miller. Gets it out towards the left forward pocket. Cast I reckon it'll be how far in this quarter as Harper comes out to mark in defence. Wide of centre half back. He plays it wide on towards the wing. And there's Johnny Walker taking the mark. Hand pass to Shinners. Now Shinners goes uh, for home. Up towards the half forward line. Castricum pushes his opponent over. And the umpire will give a free kick. Now this is Russell uh, coming in with the free. Puts the ball wide to the centre, towards the centre half forward position. Ocker Stevens went up, couldn't take the mark. There's Hibbert coming through with the ball. He gets a hand pass in, gets it through here towards Walker again. And Walker now with a kick up field towards Castricum, who waits for the ball. He, yes, he takes a right hand mark. So Castricum now running around his opponent, goes a mile, but then goes for a magnificent long kick up field towards Frosty Miller. It's knocked away from Miller. He tries to dribble along the ground. He gets in front. Oh, walk down to the ground. The umpire doesn't give a free down here, gives it the other way. Well, oh, listen to the crowd, Ted. Yes, well, a lot of the crowd, uh, Phil, they didn't agree with that decision by umpire Rex when then. Miller claiming for the free. He was playing for it, I thought, though. And there goes Klein uh, with the kickoff. Comes through towards Eddie Melee. Melee with a hand pass to Shinners. Shinners now with a short pass up here. And the mark has been taken by his captain and coach, Travis Payne. 
to Pays, deep in the left forward pocket. Not the best kick at any time, although he hasn't done too badly uh, this year. Puts the ball on its way. The wind will drag it right across the face of the big sticks. Up they fly for it. No one able to take the mark. Who can get it? It's a pick up by Breeze. That takes Dandenong on the seven goals, seven. A total of 49 to Geelong West, 10 goals, five, 65. Well, a very important Phil. <laughs> Do you think so? <laughs> All right, well, let's look at an educated kick from Harper. He's decided to kick it across towards the stand side of the ground. Travis Pays moved right down. It'll go out without being touched. Pays tries desperately. In which they kick five goals, seven. They led by 53 points at the start of this quarter. And now there's the kick in by Pays. A good kick. A goal to Dandenong. Their second for the quarter. 9-8 to 18-13. Under other circumstances, I'd say that probably the look on Travis Pays' face may have been a lot different than what it was then. It wasn't one of excitement at all. I think probably he only just looked in that well. That was just another goal to Dandenong. Lynch in towards goal, but it's marked right on the last line here by Harper, the Dandenong fullback. Harper right on the last line of defence. Dandenong 62, Geelong West 121. In the grand final of 75 as Moran takes the mark. The Dandenong gets a hand pass uh, going to Walker. Walker on the centre wing, putting Dandenong into attack. Down towards Madden, running in the half-forward line. Loses the ball momentarily. Geelong West smother it. Get it out to Klein. Klein to Barry. And Geelong West out of trouble again. Barry's not, kick is not a good one. Russell's there. Picked up by the big fellow Manson. A hand pass. In towards the centre. Pays is there, still trying for Dandenong, and uh, he'll get the free kick again. The 21-minute mark in the final quarter, as he gets it across towards the flank position, the mark is taken by Breeze. And Breeze in turn, Don, sends it up towards the centre forward position, it's through, it's another goal up to Dandenong, but they move on now to 10 goals, 8, with Geelong West uh, leading very strongly, that was his second, 18 goals, 13. And in our pick the points competition, 8 to 10 minutes of play left in the game, as Drosher now gets his kick in, plays it wide, out towards the uh, centre half back position. Pays looking a bit tired as he moved into the ball. He gets it up to Madden. Madden comes in to take the mark, runs back, and now will shoot it up towards Frosty Miller, who's making the early lead. There goes the ball on its way. It's over Miller's head, up towards Shinners, and Shinners getting a push in the back, and he'll get the free kick. So Shinners now has the chance to shoot for goal. He's kicked one point so far. Lines them up at the 23 minute mark. The ball's on its way and he's put it through for another one. And that takes Dandenong on to 11 goals, 8 to Geelong West, 18 13. Well, on one leg at the moment and he's exhausted, but you can see the way he was going for that ball before. But he's not giving up under any circumstances. Well, there's Danny Hibbert now. Hibbert taking it away from the centre, up towards Frosty Miller, and Miller has taken the mark. But at this stage, Miss Inge is in the lead on 174 for pick the points. If he scores a goal here, it'll go over to Mr. H.G. E. Kleinert, I'd say, of Bayswater. As Miller now puts the ball on its way, and it's a goal, all right. Van der Beek he's looking for, but he's out of position, and a good mark to Hayden. I would have played it. Play on. Taken here now. For the Dandy on side by Bassett. Beautiful play by Bassett. Magnificent foot. Port Melbourne 8-5, 53. Dandenong 3-2, a total of 20. And there comes the kick out towards Hibbert, who's uh, been fairly quiet. He plays it back to his own position in the centre of the ground. Herman van der Beek with Hainan. Tapped away from Hainan. But it comes in towards Swan. Now van der Beek goes after it. Also Taylor's in there. Neither of those players get the advantage. Rasmussen comes in for Port. And Rasmussen with not a good kick. Gets it up towards that forward zone. Thompson will get caught. Gets the hand pass into Taylor. Now the umpire set a push in the back, and Thompson will get the free kick. Thompson plays it out wide, gets it out here towards Hibbert. Now Hibbert on his own, in open territory, can play it around the flank towards Shinners, and Shinners takes the mark on the outer wing. He's about to go off, and the umpire says he can go back and take his kick. All right, now Shinners getting up near siren time as we get ready to put the ball on its way. Comes up towards that right uh, forward pocket. In comes Miller from behind. He's juggled the ball, but the umpire's called play on. It comes up towards the forward zone. He's put it on its way, and it's through for one point. Breeze couldn't quite get to it. So that takes Dandenong on to three goals. Three, 21 to Port Melbourne's 8-5, a total of 53. Norm Brown back here giving instructions uh, to the runner. 
As we see the ball kicked towards the centre and there's Stubbs coming in over the top of them to take the mark for Dandenong. It's a long quarter. We're coming up to the 33-minute mark. Miller's on his own out on the flank. Oh, and the Cook's been flattened. And it's right on. Harper is in trouble. And look at the players going downfield. The umpires are there. Let's watch this. And it's on. Another player is flattened the other end of the ground. Flaherty's been flattened at the other end of the ground. Oh, another one. And there's another one down at the other end. A train has gone down. And Eddie Melee's uh, standing around. In the middle, there's another fight on in the middle of the ground. Oh, look at this slinging match. Flaherty has a one into the ground in the hands of the trainers. In this bunch of uh, players, there's another player in the hands of the trainers. And then further downfield, further downfield, we have a big bunch of players. Here we are. Number 25. He appears as though he's had his uh, number taken. And there's a... a and that's the Port Melbourne doctor, I think, out on the field, the, the lady. Flaherty's still in the hands of the trainers up here. And Fred Cook in a lot of trouble. Cook, uh, Fred Cook, what a shame to see this. Fred Cook saying his rights, and away we go again, here's Don Hyde. Pot nine, Danny Long 27, and uh, one needs to have eyes in the back of the head here. And it's on again in the centre. And up by Marcy with his hands full here, and there's Harland and Bill Thompson. Green, superb in the second half. Paul has played a good game. It's Davies' flag. Can you believe it? We have seen two of the best grand finals in the last two years you could ever want to see anywhere, anywhere in Australia. Great football, fighting comeback by the Red Legs. What a game to showcase the VFA season. You're right, Phil. It is one of the great grand finals. Quarter time, Dandy Nong by two points. Half time, Werribee by 24. Dandy Nong by five at three quarter time. And the one that counts, the interval between the two seasons, they lead by nine points. They're the Premiers. Tony can speak because he's in tears. He's so emotional. Is it that good? Oh, it's great. I just want to say hello to my wife, Heather, and your little girl, Kimberly, and I. I love the both of you. It was fantastic. I just love it. It's the greatest thrill of all time. Terrific. The blokes were fantastic. I gave it to them at half time. I gave them the biggest spray and they responded just like the men they are. They were fantastic. I just love them forever now. Well done. Well, that's the emotion of a grand final win. The captain coach, congratulations, Tony Elshaw. Thanks, Ross. The manner in which they've fought back in the short space of two or three years, and it's not only we laud the uh, contributions of the Elshaws and the uh, administration, but the township of Dan.